Are you ready to make the most of your oil and gas mineral rights? Welcome to the Mineral Rights Podcast. Get the knowledge and resources you need to manage your minerals and royalties. Here is your host, Matt Sands. Hello and welcome to the Mineral Rights Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Sands, and I'm here with my co-host, Justin Williams, and we're here to help you make the most of your minerals and royalties. And we have the next video in our series that we're doing about the different state oil and gas commission websites and how to use them. And New Mexico is uh, one that I know is near near and dear to your heart, along with the Texas Railroad Commission. And you've used this one in the past. We were talking about tips and tricks, and we'll share some of those today. New Mexico's interesting one for sure. You said it, Matt. You know, I think the the Texas GIS can kind of spoil you on all the features that it has. But New Mexico doesn't have as many, though the information that is there is really good. Yeah, I I would agree with that. The map interface itself is not quite as good as Texas. So if you happen to have minerals in the Permian Basin, both in New Mexico and Texas, you'll appreciate the differences there. And we'll just go ahead and show you. I think the first thing that we want to get into is actually how do you find this website? How do you log into the map interface? How do you find the oil and gas data? Uh, Ultimately, again, just a little bit of background, what we're looking for and why we need to do this is because when you own minerals and royalties, you need to know if there are wells that are producing and what you should be getting paid. And the way that you need to go about doing that is going to the State Oil and Gas Commission website to check the production records, to check that you should have an interest in a well or not. And so you have to look at the well permits. And there's a lot of information that's publicly available. You just need to know how to go and find it. So Justin, Talk a little bit about some of the basic information you should know before getting into like actually going in and doing this for your property. You said it, man. And most of this information we're going to go into really assumes that you know how to read a legal description and then you have a basic understanding of what the documents that you're looking for mean and what actions you need to take as a, a mineral right owner to manage your minerals. And if you don't have that basic set of information, definitely take a look at Matt's Mineral Management Basics course. It's a great place to start and then build that foundation that you'll need to use this video series to actually go find the tangible information for the properties that you own. Yeah, to find that information and to know what you're looking for and how to identify where to look. And so that's where it all begins. And that starts with the legal description of a property. And we've just picked a random section that is interesting that has some activity going on. So, you know, think about this from the perspective of once you have your oil and gas lease and mineral deed and you have the legal description, which is like the address to your mineral rights on the surface of the earth and allows you to go and find them and locate them and then see what type of activity is going on nearby. And like Justin said, all the basic information about the different types of oil and gas interests, the pros and cons with both minerals and then the leasehold side of things, and then also how to actually run a title search. So if you didn't have some of those important documents at your fingertips, that you would be able to go and find them and ad- obtain those legal descriptions and obtain that address, so to speak, so that you can go and locate your property on a map. So with New Mexico, the oil and gas industry is regulated by the Oil Conservation Division. And the way that we want to get into this is within the Oil Conservation Division, you go to OCD Public Resources. Again, this is from the emnrd.nm.gov. You click on oil conservation, and then public resources. And then you'll see here this geospatial hub. And that's what you want to pick. The geospatial hub has a ton of other information, but then it also what we're going to be using it for is the link to the map interface. And that's the central kind of visual way to actually access all this data. You can search for it other ways, like with other websites. But for me, I always like this, you know, searching by map. It's a lot easier. So the particular property that we're going to be looking for is in Township 18 South, Range 28 East, and then Section 16. So you can see it on this screen. We've already pulled it up on this other window, but let's just go back to when you first open that screen. It'll show you the full state of New Mexico. Now, there's a couple of different ways. If you happen to know the API number of your well, again, that is the unique identifier and most of the time you don't know that unless it's on your check statement. Some operators put the API number on the check statement. And if that's the case, you can search directly by the API number. Let's say that we don't know that. 
And so we just want to search by the uh, PLSS townships. And again, we're looking for 18 South, 28 East. And we click on that and it takes us directly to that township. And in this case, let's say we have an interest in section 16, we would just be able to look for the, the 16 and then we can zoom in and sort of see what's going on there. Each of these black dots and these numbers represent a well. And that is the, the surface hole location. In other words, if, we, if you were to go there, you'd see the wellhead on the surface of the earth at that spot. Now, these different colors mean certain things. And if you aren't sure, you can go to the layers list and you'll see here there's the wells are turned on and we can scroll down and see these different symbols and see what these colors and symbols mean. Turns out that each of the items in red, each of the dots in red, are wells that have been plugged and abandoned, so they're no longer producing. And so we can see that the circle is an oil well, and again, this little starburst thing is a plugged gas well. So what we're looking for in this case are the black dots, which are existing, you know, producing active wells, and that is an oil well. In the case uh, here, where you see oil active. And then similarly with there's CO2 and there's gas. So any of those black dots or black starbursts represent a producing oil and gas well. Let's just say just for the sake of argument, we had an interest in all of section 16. Each of those black dots represents a well that is producing that we should have an interest in. So if we wanted to find out more information, we can click on the well and it'll pull up a little bit of a summary of the status of the well, the spud date, in other words, when they drilled that well and a type of lease. In this case, it's a state lease, the formations that it's producing from. In this case, the Grayberg and San Andreas. So this is an old conventional vertical well in those, in those more conventional formations. Same thing down here. We see some blue dots here, which happen to be a new well. So we can click on that and see the status of this. And this is the Pappy. And this is going to be producing from the Bone Spring looks like the permit was approved on August 1st of 2022. The operator is Mewborn Oil and Gas. So Justin, this tells me that there may be some new wells going to be drilled and some additional royalties we'll be receiving. You said it, Matt, which kind of triggers us as mineral right owners to go take a look at the finer details. And that really starts with the plat map. Starts with the plat map. We can click on the scanned images. So again, I just clicked on link to scanned well files and it pulls up a separate window. And you'll see here the permit itself for that particular well. We can dive in a little bit to that and see what it says. This is the PAPI 1617 B2NM State COM 1H. And usually when you see things like 1H, that tells me that that's probably a horizontal well. That's sort of a typical naming convention that operators will use, H meaning horizontal. The state aspect tells me that this well probably goes through some state minerals. So that might be a situation as a fee mineral owner. And this is something that's interesting with New Mexico is there are a lot of federal and state minerals. And so there's a mix of fee or privately owned minerals. And there's going to be a lot of times some federal uh, stuff as well. So Again, if we were looking at the mineral and surface ownership, we can sort of see here if we wanted to kind of look and see who owned what. And it looks like in this case, if we were privately owning minerals, this would be the tract that we would own up here. And everything else looks like state acreage. So that's interesting to see here. There's some private and then there's a lot of state. So this is kind of a common situation. If you were to zoom out, you can see the, the different owners and that kind of a thing. So this is a situation where as a private mineral owner, you would be influenced by regulations on federal drilling. So if they banned you know, hydraulic fracturing or banned drilling on federal lands, then the owner of this private mineral tract would be directly affected because there's really no way that the surrounding minerals can be developed without going through federal acreage. So that's why when we say the federal stuff can affect private mineral owners as well. Again, we're looking at this particular permit that talks about how deep they're going to go, spud date, and expiration date of the permit. So if they hadn't drilled it, then it would be expiring this year in, in August of 2024. 
And then to Justin's earlier point, we really want to look at where this wellbore goes and then what area is included in that unit. So again, if we had minerals in, I think it looked like it was the uh, southwest corner of the northwest corner of section 16, looked like that was where the, the fee minerals were, then we'd be interested to see, is that well going to be pooled together with our acreage. And it looks like it probably isn't going to be. It looks like this is 160 plus 80, so 240 acres. And we'd have to look here. Yep, sure enough, there's 240 acres dedicated to this spacing unit. So in this situation, we would not have an interest in this well, even though that wellbore goes through part of the section, just because this is sort of a wellbore spacing unit situation. They're not pooling all of the acreage together in section 16 and 17. So it depends on the state and adjacent state like Colorado. It's very common to see statutory pooling, Justin, to see like two full sections pooled together. And if there's a well in that section and you have minerals in that section, then you probably have an interest in that well, but not so much uh, in New Mexico. You nailed it, Matt. And you know, this is, I think for mineral right owners, one of the reasons that people advocate for those laws is situations like this. But as you said, New Mexico is not one of the ones. Yeah. So sad uh, trombones there in terms of that particular well. Now I will say that it looks like there's some other wells here. The one that goes in the other direction here, and we'll just take a look at, that was the B2NM. And we're going to look at the FE state. And we're going to go back to the link of the scanned well files. There's two versions. So we'll full, first pull up this one, and it might be that they revised the permit. So we see this one from December of 2021. And in this case, this would go straight through our mineral tract. We'd have an interest in this particular well, at least according to the original plans. Now we'll have to go back and look at, you know, what were they planning on doing here when they had this sundry notice. And so let's see what this is all about. Let me zoom in. Okay. So this is just a report that they drilled the well, and this just talks through the timing. It looks like they sputted the well on January 26th of 2022. And here's just the drilling report. So this is a sundry notice, which is just a general filing basically to give an update or to make a change with respect to a well. So it looks like that original plan was drilled. And so what we would want to do again is just go back and look. And again, if we had, let's say all of the minerals in this particular tract here in section 16, out of the 240, we would have uh, 40. So you know, if you're going to figure your proportional share, you'd look at 40 divided by 240 multiplied by your lease royalty rate, and that would determine your decimal interest in this well. So again, you can find out more information about how to calculate your net revenue interest or decimal interest in a well. We did that in episode three. So we'll link to that in the description below and in the show notes so that you can take a look at that. Again, if you're listening to this on the podcast, just remember there is an accompanying video on my YouTube channel. You can go to YouTube and search for Matt Sands Mineral Rights, and you'll see this in the how-to section. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Okay, good news here. Looks like we have a well that appears to have been drilled in 2022. Now, the big question is, is it producing, right? Right, exactly, Matt. And if, if it's producing, what are the volumes that it's producing? And when did it start producing? Yeah, those are all important questions. And uh, the way we do that is we go back to the map and you'd see here, there's another hyperlink that says link to well details. We'll click on that and take a look. And it has a lot more information on the event date. So again, it has spud date and it has like that. And most importantly, what we want to know, is this a drilled and uncompleted well or a duck or did they actually go in and complete it? And sure enough, it looks like there is completion information. We can go down here and take a look at the venting and flaring volumes and then the production volumes in 2022. Looks like they completed it around May timeframe and started flowing it back then and then started producing oil and gas in June of 2022. So if this is something we're just finding out about, maybe we inherited this property or something like that, the thing that we would know is your predecessor should have been receiving royalties from around June of 2022 and if they weren't, that could be held in suspense. There might be some other steps we need to take. But knowing this and seeing this information here, that 
can set in motion several different things you might need to do around claiming those unpaid royalties again if your predecessor hadn't been receiving royalties at that point. Could be a title issue. And all again, that's why going back and taking my course and talking about how to do a title search, you can identify if there is a, t- a gap in the chain of title, if maybe it didn't go through probate, if you've inherited it. If you live in California, you live in Texas, Colorado, whatever it is, these interests being in New Mexico, you have to go through ancillary probate in, in New Mexico. And again, this isn't legal advice. You know, Get help from an attorney if you do run into this situation. But this is a case where maybe the operator is holding those royalties in suspense because they don't know who the rightful owner is. And you'd have to go through the courts to get that all squared away and get the uh, interest transferred over to your name. So again, Justin, we can learn a lot by just seeing that this well is producing and then we can estimate our royalty payments too. We can see how, how many barrels of oil have been produced, how many thousand cubic feet of gas. And from that, figure out what the average prices were during these months. If we know the decimal interest in our well, we can get a ballpark estimate of how many dollars are being held in suspense. You nailed it, man. And you know, this again, is assuming that the title work uh, that you've done, you have that legal description. Um, and now we're just looking to act for the activity on that legal description. So it's very useful, Matt. And each website seems to be different. Um, and hopefully these breakdowns are really helping people to be able to navigate that and find the information they need. Yeah, absolutely. And an important thing is you see here the oil transporters and the gas transporters. So you can see from what point they were actually the ones that were potentially marketing it. So you might be receiving different royalty checks from the oil and gas marketer. And then also it tells you who you might need to go and contact, who the operator is. In this case, it's Mewborn. So this would be a scenario, again, contacting the operator, knowing the legal description, having the plat, putting two and two together that your mineral tract intersects the area that the well is producing from would tell you that, okay, I have a potential interest in this well. You can send them a copy of your deed, your documents that show that you're the owner and say, tell me why this well isn't in pay status. Please put me in pay status or tell me what information you need in order to do. Here's our, the legal description of the mineral tract that we own. And we believe we should have an interest in these wells. And they'll say, oh, yep, sure enough. And we were trying to find you and the check got returned or whatever. And they'll tell you what you need to do to get things squared away. So another thing that I want to highlight, Justin, is you may notice on here, this is a horizontal well that, as we saw, goes through part of section 16 and then into section 17. That doesn't show up here on the map. So I want to show you another way to be able to see this visually so that if you identify your mineral tract, you'll see if a well bore goes through where you own minerals. And The way that I like to do that is sort of combine the New Mexico OCD website with Well Database. And one way that you can do that is Well Database has a free version that you can access, a light account that allows you just to view uh, well data and view production data. And so it's a nice complement to a lot of these state oil and gas websites. And I'm not getting paid by Well Database to say this. I use it for my consulting practice. But the fact that they do have a free version that you can access is really kind of unique. Most professionals for a drilling info subscription or well database subscription, they're spending thousands of dollars a year and they get a lot more detailed data and they can do a lot more analysis. But for the free version, you can at least view on the map where the well bore goes. And sure enough, in, you know, in this situation, we can see this Pappy well goes through section 17. We we can click on it and view the well name. We can see the API number again. So one nice way to kind of combine these two is once you sort of hone in on your property in the OCD website, you can search by the API number. You just copy that and then come over to Well Database after you've created a free account and then go to the explore the the well section and look at the map under where it says API slash UWI property identifying a well. And then you can copy this API number, which again is the unique identifier for that well, and go into well database and search for that well. You can actually go and find it. And then it'll have a lot of that same information uh, that you can view on well database. But most importantly, you can see where that horizontal well bore goes. So that's one thing that is lacking from the New Mexico OCD website. So it's is a nice option that you can actually use to view some of these same information you know, slightly different format. They just pull this directly from the New Mexico OCD website anyway. So it's the same information. 
but yeah, n- a nice way to check on the map just to make sure, okay, are there any horizontal wells that go through my property? After you've identified that, you can reset the filter and it'll show all of the wells. And so again, we can see here in section 16, and there's at least one that goes through this quarter quarter section up here that we have an interest in hypothetically. And then you can see the other wells that are originate in section 16 and that go through different portions of that into others. And this is the Blanton. So somebody's a big bourbon fan. So shout out to the petroleum engineers that named these wells. That was clever. You'll find this all over the country, you know, different naming conventions, whether it's professional sports players, professional teams, you know, fun cartoon characters, you name it. They look at everything for inspiration because there's just so many wells and just uh, kind of makes it fun, I guess, as you're doing that job. So Justin, we've talked about how to find your well on the map, how to identify where the well goes, you know, the location of the well, the production, whether or not there's production, some of the things we've talked about and some of the other episodes. You want to look for the drilling permits, the sundry notices that'll tell you the important dates related to those wells, You know whether it has been drilled or not, has it been completed, and or the work that's planned. If there is some shut-in for a while, it might have some information about a workover or do whatever, and there might be a sundry notice that was published because of that. The most important thing, like Justin said, the well plat. So all of these documents that we've showed you, if you happen to have an interest in a well, you want to go ahead and download those onto your computer and organize them along with all the other information related, related to your interests. So Justin, what else? What are some of the other key events or key tips that you look for when you um, are actually going and searching for this type of information? It's a great resource for checking production. So doing end of the year production audits, checking your check statements against the records uh, that the state have. It's a great way to look and see how your royalties might be split up. For instance, Matt mentioned the marketer versus the producer. That can give you some clues. You know, just the general information that you might need through the process of managing it, most of it exists there, Matt. Yeah, that's a great point. We'll link to the episode that we did on how to audit your royalty statement. So you can check the description below and in the show notes for the audio version of this to find out more information there. So again, really useful information, you know, lacking some things, but you have to sort of just take it as it is because it's what's publicly available. But there's also some additional resources out there that, and we'll link to Well Database as well. So you can go and check out the, the free light version. And when you sign up, you can just tell them that you heard about it on the Mineral Rights Podcast. Maybe at some point I'll get a commission from all the referrals that I've sent over, but right now I'm not getting paid for uh, referring well database. It's just something I use myself. So useful information. Again, check out New Mexico OCD website, bookmark it if you have interest in New Mexico. It's something you should become familiar with and downloading all of your permits and so forth. And then if we were keeping an eye on this, we might want to make sure that we periodically come back here to see if there are additional permits that get issued or additional wells that might get drilled. So it's possible that we might have an interest in other wells in the future and we want to stay on top of that. We'll check again in six months or whatever, but that way you can stay on top of it. Be proactive, make sure that you're getting paid what you deserve. So thanks again for watching this video again, like, and subscribe, and be sure to stay tuned for additional videos we have coming out on other States. And if you have a question or any feedback, you can send it to feedback at mineralrightspodcast.com. Thanks again for watching and thanks again for listening. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks so much for listening to the Mineral Rights Podcast with your host, Matt Sands. Don't forget to subscribe and share at mineralrightspodcast.com. The Mineral Rights Podcast should not be construed as investment, legal, or tax advice. All information is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy.